Welcome to Wonderslate. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. Topic for today's quiz is Modern History. Question number 1. In the interim government formed in 1946, the vice president of the executive council was Option A. Jawaharlal Nehru. Option B. Dr. S. Radha Krishnan. Option C. C. Rajahopalachari. Option D. Dr. Rajendra Prasad. The correct answer is Option A. Jawaharlal Nehru. C. Raj Gopalachari was the head of the Department of Education and Dr. Rajendra Prasad was the head of the Department of Food and Agriculture in the Executive Council. Question number 2. The Modi script was employed in the documents of the Option A. Vodayars. Option B. Zamorans. Option C. Hoesalas. Option D. Marathas. The correct answer is Option D. Marathas. It was mainly used in maintaining revenue and administrative records. Question number 3. Which one of the following pairs is correctly matched? Option A. Battle of Baksar, Mir Jafar vs. Clive. Option B. Battle of Vendivash, French vs. East India Company. Option C. Battle of Chiliangwala, Dalhousie vs. Marathas. Option D. Battle of Khada, Nizam vs. East India Company. The correct answer is Option B. Battle of Vendivash, French vs. East India Company. Battle of Vendivash in 1960 and French were finally defeated by the English. Battle of Buxar, 1764. English under Munro defeated Mir Qasim, Shuja Urdola and Shah Alam II. Question number 4. The word Adivasi was used for the first time to refer to the tribal people by Option A. Mahatma Gandhi Option B. Thakkar Bappa Option C. Jyoti Bapule Option D. B. R. Ambedkar The correct answer is Option B. Thakkar Bappa Adivasi means primitive people. Question number 5. Who among the following was the first European to initiate the policy of taking part in the quarrels of Indian princes with a view to acquire territories? Option A. Clive. Option B. Dupleux. Option C. Albuquerque. Option D. Warren Hastings. The correct answer is. Option B. Dupleux. Dupleux succeeded Duma as the French governor of Pondicherry. His ambition now was to acquire for France vast territories in India, and for this purpose, he entered into relations with the native princes and adopted a style of oriental splendor in his dress and surroundings. He built an army of native troops, called sepoys, who were trained as infantrymen men in his service also included the famous Heather Ali of Mysore, colonial administrator and governor-general of the French territories in India who nearly realized his dream of establishing a French empire in India. Question number 6. Which one of the following is an important historical novel written during the latter half of the 19th century? Option A. Rast Goftar. Option B. Durgesh Nandini. Option C. Maratha. Option D. Nibandhamala. The correct answer is. Option B. Durgesh Nandini. Durgesh Nandini was written by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee in 1862-1864 in Bangla. Question number 7. Who among the following was associated with the suppression of thugs? Option A. General Henry Prendergast. Option B. Captain Sleeman. Option C. Alexander Burris. Option D. Captain Robert Prembitton. The correct answer is. Option B. Captain Sleeman. Captain William Sleeman was appointed by Lord William Bentick, 1828-35, to suppress the thugs. Question number 8. The educated middle class in India. Option A. Opposed the revolt of 1857. Option B. Supported the revolt of 1857. Option C. Remained neutral to the revolt of 1857. Option D. Fought against native rulers. 
The correct answer is Option C. Remained neutral to the revolt of 1857. The revolt did not spread to all parts of the country, nor was it supported by all groups and sections of the Indian society. South and West India remained largely outside the fold of the revolt. Many Indian rulers refused to help the rebels and some were openly hostile to the rebels and helped the British in suppressing the revolt. The middle and upper classes and the modern educated Indians also did not support the revolt. Question number 9. The paintings of Abhinindranath Tagore are classified as Option A. Realistic. Option B. Socialistic. Option C. Revivalistic. Option D. Impressionistic. The correct answer is Option C. Revivalistic. Abhinindranath Tagore is known as the leader of the revivalist movement in the field of modern Indian painting in Bengal. Question number 10. There was no independent development of industries in India during British rule because of the Option A. Absence of heavy industries. Option B. Scarcity of foreign capital. Option C. Scarcity of natural resources. Option D. Preference of the rich to invest in land. The correct answer is Option A. Absence of heavy industries. Question number 11. The first feature film talkie to be produced in India was Option A. Hatim Tai. Option B. Alamara. Option C. Pundalik. Option D. Raja Harish Chandra. The correct answer is Option B. Alamara. Alamara was the first Indian sound film directed by Ardeshari Rani. The first Indian talkie was so popular that police aid had to be summoned to control the crowds. Question number 12. The Governor General who followed a spirited forward policy towards Afghanistan was Option A. Minto. Option B. Duffin. Option C. Elgain. Option D. Lytton. The correct answer is Option D. Lytton. Lord Lytton, 1876-80. Question number 13. Which one of the following statements is not correct? Option A. Neeladarpan was play based on the exploitation of the indigo farmers. Option B. The author of the play Ghashi Ram Kotwal says Vijay Tindulkar. Option C. The play Navan by Nobin Chandra Das was based on the famine of Bengal. Option D. Urdu theatre used to depend heavily on Parsi theatre. The correct answer is Option C. The play Navan by Nobin Chandra Das was based on the famine of Bengal. Ghashi Ram Kotwal is a Marathi play written by playwright Vijay Tindulkar in 1972. Neel Darpan, The Mirror of Indigo, translated as Neel Darpan, or The Indigo Planting Mirror is a Bengali play written by Deen Bandhu Mitra in 1858-1859. The play was essential to Neel Bidroha, or Indigo Revolt. Question number 14. At a time when empires in Europe were crumbling before the might of Napoleon, which one of the following governors general kept the British flag flying high in India? Option A. Warren Hastings. Option B. Lord Cornwallis. Option C. Lord Wellesley. Option D. Lord Hastings. The correct answer is. Option D. Lord Hastings. Lord Hastings. 1813-23. to 23. Question number 15. The last major extension of British Indian territory took place during the time of Option A. Dufferin. Option B. Dalhousie. Option C. Lytton. Option D. Curzon. The correct answer is Option B. Dalhousie. The last major extension of the British Indian Territory took place during Dalhousie under his doctrine of lapse. Jhasi, Satara, Jetpur, Sambalpur, Udaipur, and Nagpur, and on the basis of misgovernance. Avad. Question number 16. Which one of the following statements is incorrect? Option A. Goa attained full statehood in 1987. Option B. There was an island in the Gulf of Khambhat. Option C. 
Daman and Diu are separated from Goa by the 56th Amendment of the Constitution of India. Option D. Dadra and Nagar Haveli were under French colonial rule till 1954. The correct answer is Option D. Dadra and Nagar Haveli were under French colonial rule till 1954. Dadra and Nagar Haveli was under Portuguese colonial rule till 1954 and not French colonial rule. Question number 17. Who among the following Indian rulers established embassies in foreign countries on modern lines? Option A. Heather Ali. Option B. Mir Qasim. Option C. Shah Alam II. Option D. Tipu Sultan. The correct answer is. Option D. Tipu Sultan. Tipu Sultan established embassies in France, Turkey, and Egypt on modern lines. Question number 18. Which of the following pairs is not correctly matched? Option A. India's first technical film, Jhasi Ki Rani. Option B. India's first 3D film, My Dear Kutti Chattan. Option C. India's first in short film, Tal. Option D. India's first actress to win the Bharat Ratna, Meena Kumari. The correct answer is Option D. India's first actress to win the Bharat Ratna, Meena Kumari. Meena Kumari is not the recipient of the Bharat Ratna. Question number 19. Under the Permanent Settlement, 1893, the Zamindars are required to issue pattas to the farmers which were not issued by many of the Zamindars. The reason was. Option A. The Zamindars were trusted by the farmers. Option B. There was no officials check upon the Zamindars. Option C. It was the responsibility of the British government. Option D. The farmers were not interested in getting pattas. The correct answer is. Option B. There was no officials check upon the Zamindars. John Shaw planned a permanent settlement and it was introduced in 1793 by Lord Cornwallis. British got a fixed shard of 10 by 11th of the revenue collected by the Zamindars. Question number 20. Who amongst the following Englishmen first translated Bhagavad Gita into English? Option A. William Jones. Option B. Charles Wilkins. Option C. Alexander Cunningham. Option D. John Marshall. The correct answer is. Option D. John Marshall. Question number 21. Which one of the following submitted in 1875 a petition to the House of Commons demanding India's direct representation in the British Parliament? Option A. The Deccan Association. Option B. The Indian Association. Option C. The Madras Mahajan Sabha. Option D. The Pune Sarvajanik Sabha. The correct answer is. Option D. The Pune Sarvajanik Sabha. Pune Sarvajanik Sabha was established in 1870 by M. G. Ranadaya and Joshi. It submitted in 1875 a petition to the House of Commons demanding India's direct representation in the British Parliament. Question number 22. With which one of the following mountain tribes did the British first come into contact with after the grant of Diwani in the year 1765? Option A. Gaos. Option B. Kasis. Option C. Cookies. Option D. Tripuras. The correct answer is. Option B. Kasis. After the grant of Diwani in the year 1765. The British first came in contact with a mountain tribe called Kasis. Question number 23. Which one of the following acts of British India strengthened the Viceroy's authority over his executive council by substituting portfolio or departmental system for corporate functioning? Option A. Indian Council Act, 1861. Option B. Government of India Act, 1858. Option C. Indian Council Act, 1892. Option D. Indian Council Act, 1909. The correct answer is. Option A. Indian Council Act, 1861.
the Indian Council Act of 1861 transformed the Viceroy's Executive Council into a miniature cabinet run on the portfolio system, and each of the five ordinary members was placed in charge of a distinct department of Calcutta's government. Question number 24. During the colonial period in India, what was the purpose of the Whitley Commission? Option A. To review the fitness of India for further political reforms. Option B. To report on existing conditions of labor and to make recommendations. Option C. To draw up a plan for financial reforms for India. Option D. To develop a comprehensive scheme for civil services in India. The correct answer is. Option B. To report on existing conditions of labor and to make recommendations. Whitley chaired the Royal Commission on Labor in India, which reported in 1931. Question number 25. With reference to the entry of European powers into India, which one of the following statements is not correct? Option A. The Portuguese captured Goa in 1499. Option B. The English opened their first factory in South India at Masulipatam. Option C. In Eastern India, the English company opened its factory in Orissa in 1633. Option D. Under the leadership of Dupleux, the French occupied Madras in 1746. The correct answer is. Option A. The Portuguese captured Goa in 1499. The Portuguese captured Goa from the rulers of Bijapur in 1610 and not in 1499. Question number 26. In India, among the following locations, the Dutch established their earliest factory at Option A. Surat Option B. Pulikat Option C. Cochin Option D. Kasem Bazar The correct answer is Option B. Pulikat The Dutch East India Company in India established the first factory in Masulipattanam in 1605 followed by Pulikat in 1610, Surat in 1616, Bimlipatam in 1641, and Chinsura in 1651. Question number 27. The aim of education as stated by the Woods Dispatch of 1854 was Option A. The creation of employment opportunities for native Indians. Option B. The spread of Western culture in India. Option C. The promotion of literacy among the people using English medium. Option D. The introduction of scientific research and rationalism in the traditional Indian education. The correct answer is. Option D. The introduction of scientific research and rationalism in the traditional Indian education. Wood's Dispatch of 1854 is considered as the Magna Carta of English education in India. Question number 28. Which one of the following statements is not correct? Option A. Ali Mardan Khan introduced the system of revenue farming in Bengal. Option B. Maharaja Ranjit Singh set up modern foundries to manufacture cannons at Lahore. Option C. Savai Jai Singh of Amber had Euclid's elements of geometry translated into Sanskrit. Option D. Sultan Tipu F. Mysore gave money for the construction of the idol of Goddess Sharda in the Shringeri Temple. The correct answer is Option A. Ali Mardan Khan introduced the system of revenue farming in Bengal. Parukhsir introduced revenue farming in Bengal. Question number 29. Which one of the following provisions was not made in the Charter Act of 1833? Option A. The Trang activities of the East India Company were to be abolished. Option B. The designation of the supreme authority was to be changed as the Governor, General of India in Council. Option C. All law, making powers to be conferred on Governor, General in Council. Option D. An Indian was to be appointed as a law member in the Governor, General's Council. The correct answer is. Option D. An Indian was to be appointed as a law member in the Governor, General's Council. Charter Act of 1833 provides for the appointment of a law member but not necessarily an Indian. Question number 30. With reference to colonial rule in India, 
what was sought by the Ilbert Bill in 1883. Option A. To bring Indians and Europeans at par as far as the criminal jurisdiction of courts was concerned. Option B. To impose severe restrictions on the freedom of the native press as it was perceived to be hostile to colonial rulers. Option C. To encourage the native Indians to appear for civil service examinations by conducting them in India. Option D. To allow native Indians to possess arms by amending the Arms Act. The correct answer is. Option A. To bring Indians and Europeans at par as far as the criminal jurisdiction of courts was concerned. Ilbert Bill was introduced during the Viceroyalty of Lord Ripon. Thank you for watching the video. If you'd like practice this quiz then download the Wonderslate app now, link in the description below. If you have any suggestion for us feel free to leave comments. If you liked the video and want to see more of it hit the thumbs up and don't forget to click on subscribe button to get more updates of the future videos.